Welcome into this week's Soccer Best Bets show. Today, we're going to focus on South America World Cup qualifying match day 11. It's the Common Bowl Federation and down there in South America. These games being played Thursday to Friday, November 14th to 15th. Now, I like betting on scoring props and overs in many soccer leagues, but that's just not generally a good strategy in South American soccer. Only two teams so far during qualifying have seen more overs than unders, those being Bolivia at 7-3 to the over and Chile at 6-4. Only Bolivia have seen their games average over 2.5 goals per game at 3.2. In fact, six of the 10 teams in South America have seen their games average under 2.0 goals per game. Now, with that said, let's get into the top World Cup qualifying picks and predictions for all five games this week in South America. And if you want more soccer picks, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel. You can even become a member to get more picks. Right now, there are some great members-only picks and predictions for the Nations League in Europe as well in the community members only section. So let's get into these uh, games in South America. Venezuela and Brazil will kick off first Thursday at four o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Venezuela, two, five, and three. They're eighth right now. They'll be hosting Brazil, five, one, and four, ranked fourth. Now head to head, when they last played a year ago, it was a nil, a one, one a draw. Brazil has won three previous games though, and they're undefeated in 11 games against Venezuela going back to 2008. Brazil is also 24, four, and two, all time against Venezuela. Venezuela, as most Venezuelan's games have gone well under the total. Their games have averaged just 1.8 goals per game so far through the first 10 rounds. Now, had they had some Copa America success, but they are now winless in five games, and they've only scored three goals and have just three wins in 13. For Brazil, they're also have been an under team at six and four, but they have scored the second most goals, scoring 15 goals. That's only behind Argentina. They've won two straight, three of four, and they have only two losses and just one in regulation in their last 12 across all matches. They did, though, shockingly lose away to Paraguay three games back. You have to expect Brazil to get the win here. Then Venezuela did draw them in Brazil in the last meeting. With the venue switching now to Maturin in Venezuela, they could have a chance to keep it close, at least in this game. Lavino Tinto have not lost at home in World Cup qualifying so far. They're 2-3-0. They've also only allowed one goal, and they've drawn each of their last three games at home. Venezuela are out some defenders, though. They still rely heavily on 35-year-old Solomon Rondon for the goals. Brazil have plenty of talent, but they did see both Rodrigo and Militao go down with injuries for Real Madrid this past weekend. Like I said, Brazil, you would if you were picking a winner, you'd expect Brazil, but this also could be closer than you might think. Let's create a same-game parlay. Brazil to score, so it's Brazil over 0.5 goals, paired with a double chance win or draw, and under four goals in this game. So as long as Brazil get a goal, don't lose, and we don't see a wild shootout, then we could cash that same game parlay. Created at bet 365 for minus 138 odds. Next up at 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, we have Paraguay and Argentina. Paraguay 3, 4, and 3. They're sixth right now. They'll be hosting first place Argentina, 7, 1, and 2, ranked first. Head-to-head, -head. this is always a tight meeting between these teams. Paraguay rarely wins, but they did win in 2016, but that was six games back. And they've only have one win in 12 games. Argentina won one nothing last year between them, and other recent scores have been nil nil, one nothing, one one, one one, one nothing, and nil nil. So these games always close, always tight, always low scoring. Argentina have won in Paraguay though just once in their history, and that was way back in 2013. Just focusing on Paraguay, they've been the clearest stone cold under team so far, going nine and one to the under, and their games easily average the fewest goals per game at 0.8. They've only scored and only conceded four goals as well. Paraguay they scored more than one goal for the first time in 15 games last round, and they won 2-1 to one at home over Venezuela. They're now undefeated in four, being 2-2-0, two, two and oh, and they have, though, allowed just one goal in those four games. For Argentina, their opponents here, they're 6-4 and four to the under as well, while scoring the most goals, 19, allowing just five. Argentina routed Bolivia 6-0 at home last game, and Messi had a hat-trick. And Argentina have only two losses now in 30 games. If you go back to that first game in the World Cup when they lost to Saudi Arabia. If you include that, and they are 53-11-3 across their last 67 in all competitions. So it's rarely a good bet on betting on Argentina to lose games. Now, five of those wins needed extra time or PK. So technically, there are a few more 90-minute draws in there as well. Only four times in those 67 games have they not at least gotten on the score sheet. Paraguay always cashing unders, and these teams always playing in close games. A close one could be in the cards again. Argentina do rarely not score, so let's go Argentina to score and under three goals. So expect a likely a tight, low-scoring game where Argentina maybe comes out on top. Argentina to score under three game goals plus 125 odds. The next game, the third game 
on Thursday is Ecuador hosting Bolivia, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Ecuador, 4-4-2. Four, four, They're ranked 5th. Bolivia, 4-0-6, oh, and, and they are 7th. Head-to-head, -head, last meeting was 3-1 Ecuador. With an Ecuador win in a friendly back in June. The last competitive match in qualifying was last October, with Ecuador also winning 2-1, that being in Bolivia, which usually is a very tough place to play. Ecuador now wants, have now won seven straight, and they are 8-1-0 in their last nine games, with Bolivia last winning between them back in 2015. The over 2.5 has gone 7-1 in their past eight meetings, so this is usually a higher-scoring matchup. For Ecuador, they've been a near lock, though, to the under. They're 8-2 to the under, and they've only seen an average of 1.0 goals per game in their matches. They've been in decent form now with just two losses in seven games. The one was away to Brazil and one away to Argentina in PKs in the Copa, so no shame in those losses either. They also have just three losses in 10 and only six losses in 22. The under is on a perfect 6-0 run in their recent games with a 1-0 loss, a 1-0 win, and two 0-0 draws. For Bolivia, they're still the only team who have not drawn a game yet during qualifying. Now, while they've scored a decent 11 goals, they've given up a boatload of goals, giving up 21, making their games easily the highest scoring of any team in qualifying. They had only two wins in 17 across all competitions, but then they had three straight wins before getting blanked 6-0 away to Argentina last game. Now, two of those three recent wins were at home, and the other was against Chile. That road win versus Chile is their only World Cup qualifying road win ever, like ever in their history, in their 67 all-time World Cup qualifying road matchups. So given how poor Bolivia is always on the road and how strong Ecuador has been when these teams meet, you would expect Ecuador to win. That is heavily juiced at minus 600, so you would need them to win by probably three or four goals to make that worthwhile at all. Let's try to create a, a same game parlay here. Ecuador over 1.5 goals plus the under five total game goals in case we Bolivia contributes to the score sheet as well. That would come in at minus 143 in a same game parlay. You could possibly go Ecuador to score two and under four if you wanted some better odds there as well. Let's move into Friday where we have Uruguay and Colombia, seven o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Uruguay four, four and two, their third. Colombia five, four and one, ranked second. Copa America, Colombia won one nothing in the semifinals in a game that saw chaos and fights in the stands with fans, players, and families afterwards. Now, the reverse fixture in World Cup qualifying was a 2-2 draw last October with two 0-0 draws before that. The draw has hit now in three of four meetings between them. Colombia won one of those 0-0s in PKs, so they are 2-2-0 versus Uruguay recently. For Uruguay, they are 6-4 and four to the under, and they have now cashed four straight unders, all of those coming since the Copas. They've allowed the fourth fewest goals during qualifying with just six. Uruguay had been in top form at 14-4-3, but after beating Canada in the Copa America third place game, they've gone winless now in five games. They have won friendly four World Cup qualifying matchups. Those scores have been 1-1, 0-0, 0-0, a 1-0 loss, and then another 0-0. Now, now, much of this can be attributed to the wrath of suspensions from the Copa America fights, but Uruguay games have now just been stone-cold unders and draws for a while. It's worth noting though that Uruguay will see the reinforcements return with the Copa America suspensions now complete. For Colombia, they're six and four to the under and actually very compare very uh, comparably with Uruguay. Both have scored 19 goals, both have allowed six, and they've both seen their games average 1.9 goals per game. Colombia's cooled off a bit now. Generally, they're still in very good form going back quite a bit now. They lost to Argentina in the Copa final, and since they have a 1 1 draw, a 2 to 1 win. A 1-0 loss, and then a 4-0 win last game. Now, their 1-0 loss in Bolivia was tough and confusing considering they played up a man for much of that game, and it was manager Nesto Lorenzo's first loss in charge of the team in regulation. But even playing up a man, they clearly struggled to play at that elevation in Bolivia. It's still, though, just two losses in all competitions across 33 and only one in regulation two games back against Bolivia. They've scored in 28 of those 33 games as well. This one just looks too close to call here. Uruguay are at home. They should get their suspended players back. But then Colombia is rarely losing games lately. However, they've also never won a game in Uruguay since 1973. Let's look to the draw here at plus 220 odds. And finally, Peru and Chile. This is at Friday, the last game of the round. Friday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Peru won 3-6. and six. They're ranked 9th. Chile won 2-7, and seven, ranked 10th. So we have the bottom two teams facing off here. Head-to-head, -head, they met at the Copa Americas, and they drew 0-0 in the group stage. Chile won 2-0 at home in the home leg of qualifying last year. No matter who wins lately, though, rarely do both teams score, with the no being 6-0. The home team is undefeated in four 
and has also lost just one of the last seven when they've met up. For Peru, nearly every Peru game goes under at 9-1 so far, and their game seeing just 1.7 goals per game. That one over, though, was last game, where they lost to Brazil 4 to nothing. Last international break, Peru got a shock 1-0 win uh, over Uruguay, but then followed up with that 4-0 road loss to Brazil. They now have just one win in seven, and they've scored just two goals in those seven games and scored just three goals across their last nine games as well. Switching over to Chile, they are one of only two teams to have more overs and unders. That's mostly due to their awful defending, giving up 18 goals in the 10 games. That's the second most, and they've only scored five. They've been about as bad and maybe worse than Peru for some time now. They were 0-2-1 at the Copas, and they've lost four straight in World Cup qualifying, being outscored 11-2. They're now winless in seven, and they've scored just two goals. If we go further back, they have only six wins across 29 in all competitions, and that goes back to March 2022. So they've been in poor form now for well over two years. And if you want to focus solely on World Cup qualifying games, it's also poor reading with just one win in 12 and only five in 25. So in this game, it's hard to back either of these teams right now for a win. At home, you'd have to lead Peru. They've only lost two of 11 home World Cup qualifying games going back now over multiple campaigns. And those losses came to Brazil and Argentina. But then they only scored more than one goal three times in 13 home World Cup qualifying games. Peru's lack of scoring is just so bad that the possible return of 40-year-old Paulo Guerrero is still worth noting here. For Chile, 35-year-old captain Alexis Sanchez still in the, in the mix, but he is out injured though as well. Other options, if you're not going to lean towards a Peru possible win, would be the under 1.5 goals at plus 137 or like a, light, a likely draw like they did in the Copas which is at crazy low odds of plus 187. That probably looks like the best bet here, a draw at plus 187 odds. Now, what do you see happening in these games? I'm gonna put all these uh, picks into a graphic at the end of the video. You can check that out as well. Be sure to share what you're betting in any of these games down there in the comments, where you're watching from, and good luck this week with all your bets.